the mic on? Okay. Um, let me let me try this. I don't know how many of you got glasses here. Okay. How many of you struggle with your mask hooking onto your glasses and then your mask steaming up beneath it and then your oh, yeah right okay you, you understand that. So if you see me get, and I'm all over the place, it's because it's the mask and the glasses. Are. But it's wonderful to be here, and I just want to say good morning to everyone again. And let's see if we can do that. Good morning, everyone. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I know, definitely. So, uh, you know, I'm not too sure where you've been this week and where you visited and how welcome those people have made you feel. But this morning, you're not just welcome, you're part of a fantastic big family. So God would not say, you know, you're welcome. You'll just say, well, you've always been part of me, so I don't have to welcome you because you're here. And so this morning, my prayer is really that you enjoy God's presence and allow the Holy Spirit to move in you. And so what we're going to do, we've got a, I've got a little challenge for you, and we've got a song. So um, we're going to have a song where the, the young kids are going to come up in front here. Yeah? And if you're younger than 80, you can also come because God said we need to approach His throne like children, so we can come as well. But while the, the kids are going to sing a song, I've got a challenge for you. I believe there's someone here that wants to share something of God's goodness, of God's grace, or where God's laid something in your heart to perhaps challenge the church with, or just to share about God's goodness. So I'm going to give you one song. And if I don't find someone, I'm just going to pick someone. All right? And I know, I'm, as a teacher, I know those, those ones that want to say something, but they're quiet. I know I can see them from a mile away. So don't even think you're going to hide the way this morning. So I really, I think, so let's invite the children up here. And uh, we, we want to do things differently. Children, if, if you guys can come up here, everyone that's a kid, everyone that feels young enough. Tony, I definitely think you're young, young enough. But we want to do things different. We don't want you to sing towards the church. We want you to sing as though you're singing towards God. We're going to be together. We're going to be behind you. We're going to support you. So you don't have to face the church because you get embarrassed. So let's face yeah, the worship group and we think uh, that we're actually just singing to the Lord. The Lord's throne is that. So I, I, no, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm gonna let everyone just come slowly because I know it's quite difficult to bring anyone up here. And then afterwards, I've got a challenge for that one or two people that want to share about God's goodness. Excellent. Yeah. So face. Don't face your, your parents. Yeah. Forget about the parents. All right. And we want some actions, adults. Let's all stand. Come, everybody. I wanted to start and I wanted to say good morning, grade ones. But you're not grade ones, so good morning. How are you? Thank you. I am very well. Okay. I want to tell you a quick story. What is happening in the evenings that we don't like with ESCOM? What's happening? It gets dark. Why does it get dark? We've got to sleep, but if you switch the light on and there's no light, what's happening? It's load shedding. Who likes load shedding? Uh, and what happens at night if it's load shedding? You get scared sometimes, yes. You get scared sometimes. But I want to tell you today, you don't have to get scared. Because I'm going to teach you a little verse. And that's also the song that we're going to sing. And it says in Isaiah 60 verse 1, Let your light shine for all to see. For the glory of the Lord um, rises on, and will shine on you. So Jesus' light will shine on us. And a few weeks ago at Sunday school, we learned... That if there's darkness and they, then what happens to the darkness? It goes away. It goes away. So this is our light, and this is Jesus, and He shines on us. So Jesus is in us. So we shine Jesus's light out to the world. Nee. So do we have to be scared? Do we have to be scared? No, never, because Jesus is in us. Okay, 
I want to show you this song. And the verse, the words of the verse is exactly the words that we're going to sing. So let's put it on, please. Creep, creep, creep in the dark, here comes to blow out all your lights. Doesn't want you telling everybody that Jesus rules all right. share a testimony and I thought I'd share it with the children too because we also ask in Pittman we always ask what has Jesus what has Jesus done for you this week so I just had a story to tell because I saw the I God was very present for me this week as he always is but he just made it very clear for me um I had felt very disillusioned with the world this week because there seems to be so much bad things happening and I was very sad about that, because I was saying, Jesus, we want, it should be better. And so I was wondering where Jesus was, if he was seeing what I was seeing. And um, I know that Glenn was trying to find a school to come here next year, and he'd asked Jackie, and Jackie spoke to me, and it sort of was this trail that went on, and I then went to a friend of mine and said, do you know? And this girl said to me, by the by, there's this lady who's doing a, who needs a place next year, but actually I was looking to this lady for something else. So I phoned this lady, Lauren, and just said, oh, tell me about your school, what's your school about? And I was going on and on and on. And then I said, um, where are you going to be next year? And she said, well, I'm still looking for a place. And I said to her, well, you know, Glenn from Joy, I come from Joy to the Nations, and Glenn at Joy to the Nations is looking for somebody at the school next year, and he's only going to charge 10% or rent of what you earn. And she went, okay. Um, and I said, I can send you his number and you can get hold of him. Anyway, then she just said to me, are you a Christian? And I said, yes, I am. She said, this morning I prayed to God that he would help me find a place where I only had to pay 10% of the rent. And I've, I've never had an experience where I didn't, I was just, you know, I was just a vessel in the process. And it was God saying, huh, ah, I can see what's going on. So it's just a reminder. He's watching. Thank you. And now the children can go. And while the children are going, we're just going to ask you to sit down quickly. We just want to quickly go through the announcements, and then we're going to get into someone still that one maybe wants to share, and then uh, into worship. Um, so tonight, tonight I have to take my glasses off again. Tonight, uh, Lynn and Corin are going to be ministering at Storehouse. Um, there are a few of them going, a few of you guys are already going, but if anyone else still wants to join, not too late. Please see Glenn afterwards. I see Kaya's hand going up there. All right, uh, after the service, we've got some veggies <laughs> from the veggie garden. 
that need to be distributed. And I'm looking for a champion that can coordinate that. Uh, Albert. Where's Albert? I'm from my glasses. There you go. Sorry, Albert. Stand up there, Albert. Thank you. Albert will uh, coordinate it. So thank you for that, Albert. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's then uh, where's Betty? Just, just please stand up. Okay, so Betty is a great grandmother this week. All right. So he has a challenge. Who feels they want to share something about God's goodness? We've heard Trisha now say, is there someone here who want to come forward? Good, come forward. This morning, I just want to tell you that uh, I'm at Jerusalem Ministry. Um, and I couldn't go to church properly as I would like to for the past maybe two months because of things that I have to do on a Sunday. And uh, during this week, we actually got somebody in to help us with that. And I can stand here this morning and tell you what God has done for me. Um, you know, I was very frustrated the last couple of weeks because I can't come to church. Uh, and because this person is helping us out, I'm able to stand here. Um, I also told Glenn earlier that, uh, you know, I've been thinking, I've been looking for a spiritual house. Uh, and I just landed up this morning here. And I just want to tell Glenn, Glenn, whether you want me or not, you're stuck with me. <laughs> Yeah, we, we've, got, we've, got room, we've got room for more. Um, and this morning, as, as we're sharing this, this morning was just, again, uh, please don't feel this that you can't share because who you are. You know, God loves us exactly the same. So, yeah, there we go. Good morning, church. How are you all this morning? Ready to praise the Lord? Okay, as you all all know, I had a problem with my eye. This is God's work. Don't ever lose trust in God. Okay, I went to the hospital at Provincial. I had an op, but it wasn't 100%. So the doctor there took me to Iron Laser for second opinion. So when I went to Iron Laser, and you know that's an expensive place, but that doctor did it cost free. Wow. And he's, I can see on the top arm, he still got to do laser on Tuesday, and there's another op to, to do the bottom half. But that's a bit risky. But it's all in all God's work, all in God's time, because He ordained this for me. And I give all my praise and glory and honor to Him. Thank you. All right. So as we go and worship, I've got a little challenge for you. Grant. And so many people in the prayer meeting prayed about acts and acting and that the, the message of, of God is for everyone. And uh, to sh I like your, let your light shine. And uh, I, know, I know you've never heard of Acts 243. You haven't heard of Acts 243. But I believe we're in Acts 243 because that book is being written through you guys. Acts just stops suddenly. But it's continuing you. And so perhaps today God's going to call you during worship to do two things. Either allow His Holy Spirit to fill you, to encourage you. Or that thing He's been asking you for years, or perhaps something new is going to lay in your heart to act upon it. And so I really pray that this morning as, as we worship, allow the Holy Spirit to be kind and gentle and a great comfort to you. But let us go and act on that thing. Let's go act on it. And uh, let's go write chapter 244 next week then. Right. Thank you, Ron. Oh, the 
weight of His glory. Oh, the wonder of His grace, the power of salvation that pulled me from the grave. His hope is not empty, and forever He will reign, and He won't be put to shame. When his love took me captive And my sin was washed away Now I stand here forgiven And I know that I am saved And I won't be put to shame Oh my soul Sing to the God of the ages Sing to the Lord of creation Sing His praise. We remember. Remember how our God has never failed, never failed us. Remember that His name will make a way. You make a way from the cross to the grave. He is risen. Now He reigns. Praise the Lord. Sing His praise.
E kama li ka Jesu Christu ma li bongwe i kama li ka Jesu Christu ma li i kama i kama li ka Jesu Christu ma li i kama i kama li ka Jesu Christu ma ma li bongwe ma li bong
West African people, let's be praising now. Be praising now. your name on high, Lord Jesus. Yes, He fills the street to look upon the one who bled to save me and walk with him for all eternity. There will be a day when all
Father, you are indescribably holy. The fact that, Lord, that we can call you Abba, Father, Dad. Wonderful way that you've blessed us with your Holy Spirit's presence, Father. Thank you, Lord, that our songs have reached heaven, Father. You've heard them. You're so well pleased with us, Father. Lord, that you are a Father that loves. You are not a distant Father. Father, you are creator of heaven and earth. Your name is above all names. You are King of all kings, Lord of all lords, God of all gods. Yet, Father, we can praise you with boldness and confidence. Thank you, Lord. Praise in Jesus' name. Amen. While you, well, we just wait for Glenn. We've got, someone came to me with us, another testimony of God's goodness and I, I think it will be wonderful as we just sit down. Morning um, church. 
So um, I felt a prompting when Martin called for someone to come and share on God's goodness. And I didn't want to do it because I didn't think I'd have the emotional capacity to do it. So just bear with me. Um, yeah, so on the theme of holy, holy is the Lord. I just want to share on God's goodness to us as a family. This year we've been through an incredibly tough year. It's been sad. It's been raw. It's been disappointing. It's been hurtful. And as I reflect on the year, um, I see God's thread through it out, throughout the year. And how he placed significant people in our path. People that was not a coincidence that we met them or that we spoke to them. And that is God's goodness. Um, I see God's goodness in this joy family. You know, I feel we, we felt a bit like Moses when you just can't keep your hands up anymore. You just don't have the strength even to pray. And how this joy family have propped us up. How our fellowship group, Martin, Colette, um, Duncan and, and Natalie and Trisha and John T have just stood by us and wept with us. And just um, Karen and Glenn. Um, and the prayer group, and Tiernis. And it's just been amazing how the Joy family has just propped us up. So that is God's goodness. But what I want to say to you is that we're not at the end of the road. We don't know the answers. We, we, we don't know. We're still on this journey. But one thing I do, actually two things I know. The one thing is that God is good. And through it, God's goodness has been there. And we've seen that in the support and the prayer that we've got. And the other thing is that we, the only thing that we can look to is to place our hope in God. And without hope, we feel lost. But if we have hope, we can continue on this road. And so for us, for Hannah and I and for our family, we have hope. We know that God has a plan. We don't know how it's going to work itself out. Um, but our hope is in that. And so I also just want to say thank you to the Joy family for the amazing support that you've just given us through your prayers. Um, yeah, and all praise to God. Thank you. Sharing that testimony. Sometimes we have to share the testimony on the run because then we see how God does work it out. It's beyond our wildest dreams. I want to say, guys, it's such a privilege. Um, guys, I haven't taken the money away yet. I'd love to just pray over these baskets. Sometimes we, we don't make, I think we make too little about money. We don't preach about it often. We trust God. We have difficult seasons. But before the stewards take it away, I just want to pray over these baskets. Thank each and every person for their faithfulness and what God's doing in your life and His provision for you and through the work of church as well. So guys, wherever we're going to can take it away. Father, we, we don't take this lightly. When I see people streaming forward in worship, it just it warms my heart and imagine how it warms yours. That uh, people just giving out of the goodness of their heart to you and to the work of this church and for this kingdom. We ask you, Father, that the basket will never run dry here, that we would always be able to have enough for ourselves and to bless others, Father, and to go to the places you call us to go. We say thank you for your incredible hand of provision on this church, particularly the last 13, 14 months since we've been here. We have said the barrels have never run dry, Father, and we trust you for the, fruit, for the future and for the now, and for the great dreams that you have in our hearts still that you are still going to resource. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thanks, Hannes. Put them away. We don't take giving lightly as part of our worship to God. I was just saying, it's such a privilege to preach here, you know, and I actually believe the anointing is so strong. I think any of you could stand up and preach a word. I honestly believe that. And I feel, I feel privileged that I have a platform to do that. And, and Adrian felt it last week. It's so easy to minister in this church because of the presence of God. And he doesn't fail to meet with us every time we worship him. But his spirit doesn't lift when we now come to his word. I, in fact, the Father, I want to pray your Holy Spirit over this word. I'm going to share something that you've put in my heart and I pray that I would not mess up anything that you have prepared for the hearts of the folk here today. Father, there's much as Martin said, you want us to continue to live in this book of Acts that we're busy with. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, to come and just reside and rest on this word today in the hearts of every man and woman listening online for your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. So... Uh, <laughs> Acts 10 to 12 is my brief for today. I'm only going to get to Acts 10. I want to tell you that now. I want to apologize. But I feel it's one of the most critical hinge points or, or turning points of the Bible. And it's many of the commentators agree with that, that it's a literal point of no return, the pivotal turning point in the, in the church, in the history of the church. And you're going to see why. So what I'm going to do, the whole of chapter 10 is 48 verses. So sometimes I read and you fall asleep. So I felt God give me liberty to tell the story of chapter 10 today. Okay, and I trust that I touch on all the right and the important parts. And then we're going to unpack this chapter and see 
What's the significance of us of this for us now in 2021, in the middle of beginning of November? This is what Acts 10 is about. It's about a man called Cornelius. He lives in Caesarea. Okay? He is a Roman officer in the, in the army. So not well loved by the Jews at all. In fact, despised. Okay? But he's a devout man. He's a family man. He's a God-fearing man. He gave generously to those in need and he prayed to God regularly. So he was different to the typical Roman centurion or whatever. But he has a vision while he's praying one day. And an angel of God comes to him and says the following to him. In fact, in fact, the first thing the angel does is he says, Cornelius, and he calls him on his name. I'll tell you the significance of that just now, but when God knows your name, it's a pretty good thing. And this is his response. Cornelius stared at this angel in fear, and he said, What is it, Lord? In other words, here my Lord, talk to me. I'm available. Straight away he recognized that God was speaking through the angel. So during his prayers, and it, they say that his, his giving, and just the man who he was at Noticed by God. So he says to him in the, in the vision, send some of your men to Joppa, to a place 45 kilometers away. I'm going to explain that just now. Caesarea and Joppa, remember those two places. Go to Joppa and bring back a name, a man called Simon or Peter, as he's known. Okay? So this Roman guy says, okay, I'll do it. He calls his servants. The next day he sends them out to go to this place called Joppa to find this man who he doesn't know who he is called Simon Peter. This is how God works. Peter is praying the next morning, noontime. He's praying in Joppa. And he has a vision at this time. Okay? Peter's up on the roof and he's praying, but he gets hungry. Have you ever got distracted when you're praying? And you always think, hey, that thing I'm distracted by, that's a problem. Maybe just pray about that thing. But he gets hungry. That's his distraction during prayers. Because it's lunchtime. And he has this vision in our room. Who remembers that old Omo advert or whatever? It was this huge sheet that came down. And then the cows and whatever ran all over it and made it dirty. And then they washed it and picked it up with the helicopters. Tracy doesn't remember the advert. Anybody else remember that advert? Thank you. Anyway, so I'm reminded of that. Joe, you're too young. But, but, but in this trance, in this vision now that Peter sees, he sees this beautiful white sheet, but it gets trampled on by all four four-legged animals, by reptiles even, by birds, of the, everything. And they're all over this, this um, sheet. And God says to Peter, or this this vision. He says, get up, Peter. Kill and eat. Kill and eat. What does Peter say to him? Peter says, surely not, Lord. Oh, I can't do that. Some are clean and some are unclean and all the Jewish traditions and principles and cultures. And that's all he's worried about. So he says no to God. God repeats it three times to him to get his attention. Eventually, Peter realizes, hey, I'm not getting away with this. God's like trying to say something to me. Maybe this is about more than just food. <laughs> God is talking about men. But the Spirit says then to Peter, and as the guys are knocking at his door, he says to Peter, there's men coming at your door and they're coming to take you to Caesarea. Go with them. They're Romans. They're not Jews. They're Gentiles. But go with them. So Peter goes down and there they are at his door. But what he does is he puts his culture aside and he invites them in as guests. He doesn't hesitate to respond to the word of God now because the Spirit of God has spoken to him and we've been speaking constantly about the Holy Spirit. So the Spirit speaks to Peter and he lets these guys in and he treats them well and he treats them like guests and he has them in his home. The next morning he says, okay, off we go. Let's go to this guy called Cornelius that I don't know, 45 kilometers away, which is a good day's walk for them or more. Okay. The story continues. Peter gets there. What happens? Cornelius and his whole household, his soldiers, his family, they're all waiting in anticipation for Peter to come. Peter comes. Peter starts preaching to them. Peter preaches the person of Jesus. He preaches the resurrection of Jesus. He preaches the full gospel message to these Gentiles. Now again, Peter's gone into the Gentiles' home, which is totally frowned upon at this time. Not acceptable. Do not do that. We do not do that. But something happens in the presence of God in that home. Peter has a revelation that God doesn't have favoritism towards men anymore. Because remember, until then, the gospel was only for the Jews. This is the hinge of what we live in today. This chapter 10 of Acts is phenomenal. It's the hinge of the gospel going from the Jews to the Gentiles, which is to the ends of the earth, to the rest of the world. It had been limited until then. And God smiles upon this. And he says to Peter, I'm using you to break ground here. And because Peter was instructed by the Holy Spirit, he was able to do it. He went against all of his culture, but he listened to God. And he says, I see that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. So he preaches the peace of Jesus over there. God anoints 
him and he preaches the message of Jesus and especially, as I said, the resurrection of Jesus to the point that the Holy Spirit is poured out on these Gentiles. The Holy Spirit of the Jews, their precious Holy Spirit is now poured out on all men. Poured out on the Gentiles and they start speaking in tongues and there's evidence of this. It rocks his world. It says some of the, the circumcised men with Peter, because some, of the, some guys went with him to say, let's see what this trip is all about. But in other words, some of the other Jews are jealous now. They're astonished. How can this be? How can God give our Holy Spirit to these guys as well? Peter says, let's go baptize them. They've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, and they get baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's where the chapter is. It is so significant, friends. We, the way God has orchestrated things was without, if you took one chapter out of the Bible, it would change everything. This is one of them. Acts chapter 10 changed everything. That's why I want to talk about it a bit today. So we see that there's this man, as I said, as we unpack it. His name is Cornelius. He's a devout. A devout person is deeply committed. He was deeply committed to the things of God. He feared God. He led his household well. He gave generously to the poor. He prayed to God always. But he stopped short of becoming Jewish because they were trying to put this extra stuff on him. You must be circumcised. You must eat what we eat. You must do this. And God's saying, no. So Cornelius would resists that, but like everything else, he's, he's a follower of, of God, but he hasn't found Jesus yet until Peter introduces him. So God speaks, and this is beautiful. If you go back to, to what Trisha's testimony was earlier, and even something of what Jackie was saying, there's, there's some of these divine appointments. God is speaking to Cornelius about Peter, but he then also speaks to Peter about Cornelius. See that? And there's this thing that comes together when God has created a divine appointment, and that's what happened with some of these meetings this last week. God creates divine appointments. Get back to those. So God speaks to Cornelius about Peter. At that stage, a, a patriotic Jew, a typical Jew who went to the synagogue, he hated a man like Cornelius because he was a man in authority over them as a Roman officer. But Jewish people, in the same way, would respect a man like that because he, he respected God and he feared God or whatever. But they would not, as much as they respected him, they would never have him in their home. They would never share their food with him, and they would never share their life. There was this total segregation of these people called Jews and Gentiles. So then God says, as I said, he sent the vision of an angel to Cornelius. God calls him by name, which is very special. It meant he had a real, had a real relationship with God. But listen to this. Even though God got Cornelius' attention by sending an angel to him, he sent a man to preach the gospel to him. How's that? God's looking for a man and a woman to take the gospel message out. No other way. I mean, yes, God can give people dreams and visions and all that. It's amazing, but it gets their attention. But somehow when the gospel needs to be preached and somebody needs to respond, 99% of the time it needs a man. And that's why God calls Peter into the situation. So I want to ask you, what divine appointments is God setting up for you and me this week? Who's he speaking to about you right now? Who's God speaking to you about somebody else? I know it's happening right now. Cornelius was full of faith. He was contagious, in fact, because it says his whole household and all of those under his authority also worshipped or also revered this God, all because of his example. He was a strong leader, and he pulled people into his slipstream. 45 kilometers away, there's a place called Joppa. Tina said a word the other day, which I, I wanted to elude in my last preach, but he said there were many guys at Joy that he felt were running. That they were like Jonas. So Jonas ran away from Nineveh, and they ran to Joppa. God finds them in Joppa and he brings them back to Nineveh. This is your Nineveh, guys. Don't run away from what God's calling to you in this place. But yeah, we've got one guy in Joppa, one guy in Caesarea. Joppa was a, a very busy trade center and Caesarea was a, a port, a very busy port place. So uh, God speaks to Peter. He says to him when he's shown him this white sheet with all of these animals and whatever, he says, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And how dare Peter say to the Lord, not so, Lord. Like us sometimes. No, Lord. God speaks to us. We say, No, Lord, I know better than you. I don't think that's a good idea. I've got a better idea. No, Lord. But I was reminded of a song that I've been singing this whole week, and Gerald's going to join me in it if nobody else knows it. But because uh, when we say no to the Lord, that's not an option. Because when Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus say yes, Nobody can say no when Jesus say yes. Nobody can say no 
When Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. Even my barista's laughing at me. <laughs> I've sang that song in Africa for like three hours, nonstop. I brought you at times. It's like, but it's like, God had to speak to Peter three times in the vision and say, no, you can't say no to me. Catch a wake up. This is not about food. I'm saying there's no clean and unclean men and women anymore. Come on. That's the difference. So who are we to say no to God when he calls us? The only response, the only valid response is yes. Because Peter had put God in a box. This is God, not neat and tidy. Us Jews, we got it all. Holy Spirit's ours. Everything's ours. We put God in a box as well. You know how we put God in a box? If I prepare for this message so well, and I prepare for meetings so well, and I leave no room for the Holy Spirit, I'm putting God in a box. If I sometimes think I'm so right, so pious, I've got all the answers. Sometimes you can be, I, this is, you can be so right that you're horribly wrong. Just think about that for a moment. Because it's all about our attitude in the way that we lord it over people sometimes. Don't put God in a box, my friends. Peter learned quickly. He, he, yes, he started with a no, but he did respond very well after that. And then he threw custom aside and he threw tradition aside. And I'm speaking to you guys this morning. Throw your custom and your tradition aside for the things of the kingdom. That must come first. I'm not saying turn your back on your, on your custom. But it must never come before God. So what else am I saying? Peter was saved. He was full of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't say he's full of the Holy Ghost. Same, same person, I don't know, some Americans love this, like more powerful when you speak of the Holy Ghost. Peter was saved, he was filled with the Holy Spirit, he was being used powerfully by God, but he was still just Peter. I want to say to you, he's still just Mandla, still just Grant, Corin, Ben, Kaya, Martin, Moira. We're still just ourselves with all of our imperfections and our issues. And God says, but I'll, I'll take the gospel through this guy. That's what God wants to do. Don't disqualify yourself this morning, my friends. Be yourself. We understand. We all understand we've got rough edges. God wants to work with them and through them. In the Old Testament already, if something was holy and it came into contact with something that was common, that which was holy was made common. So if something was consecrated to God and it came into contact with something unholy, it became desecrated. It must be thrown away. It's useless. That's what was at stake here. When Peter went into this context, into first he had the, 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 the Gentiles into his own home, so everybody in Joppa saw it, then he went to Caesarea, and now he goes publicly into a home. It's like his whole reputation, everything's trashed. You're now uncommon, you're useless to the things of, of, of God. That's what the world was thinking around him at that time. But, as I said, the Holy Spirit had spoken to Peter, so he was prepared to put aside custom and tradition and say, what does God say, what does God's word say? do that first. God was busy expanding Peter's heart and his mind. What is God expanding or what does he need to expand in you or me this morning? What is too small that God needs to expand and grow in you this morning? What of your understanding? What in your mind? What in your heart of love for people, of generosity, of what capacity does God need to increase by his Holy Spirit this morning? Jeremy, what do you think it is? Thank you. I think there's, for all of us there's something we, we put God in the proverbial box and we keep him small. God's saying, I want to expand something within your heart this morning. Okay, we've heard about Peter. So Peter was prepared to re-examine his traditions and his prejudices. And I'm going to come to that now. In light of God's word, he shared God's heart for a lost world. I want to talk about a nice, mushy, cute principle. Something called, South Africa is called the Rainbow Nation. I think I've got a picture. Put the rainbow nation on. And I know we, we had some good worship, and we, but I need a few minutes for you to see something this morning. I think God's wanting to speak to us about our beautiful rainbow nation. Okay, so the rainbow nation, every, in everybody's mind, there's like seven colors, I think, but we have 11 official languages and so forth. So I want to create a rainbow nation here this morning. So the front row might need to move back just a little bit. If you can do that. Okay. And please forgive me. Keep your masks on, those who are going to come forward to illustrate this. But we might... Social distancing might be very tight. I want, just, just for numbers, I want three white English people, male or female, to come and stand here in a, in a row quickly. Three white, Kaya, that's not you. 
Come, let, let's, let's not prolong this. Let's not prolong this. Three white male or female, they're English speakers. Tight against you. You're going to face that way. Josh, you're in there. Thank you. One more, one more, one more. Okay, there we go. Can I have, let's get to, to three Hossa speaking South Africans. And I want Manla in front. I'm not sure about John. Pity you can join him as well. And a third. Right, right, shoulder to shoulder facing that way. Let's create our rainbow. You see the colors already. Uh, mother, next to him. Remember now, you're a different, you're a different color. You, you, you're the next color of the rainbow. Stand next to him. Got it. Okay, there we go. Shoulder to shoulder. Okay, there's number three. Can I have three Shona speaking or foreigners? Zimbabwean, Zambian, Malawian, anybody? Three. Gerald, you can lead that team. And can I have three Afrikaans, white? First language Afrikaners, white people next to them. Can I have three colored people? Reggie, you're in front. Can I have three Asian people? Tammy, if you're in the house. No, you're not. You're not. You're not, buddy. I'm sorry. Okay. There's Zane behind you. Okay. Philip and Cho and, and Tammy, can we have some Asians? You see how beautiful this nation is? This rainbow nation. Can you see it? Okay. I love you to march back and forth, but we won't for now. But now, now, I'm getting excited. God says there's more. God says there's more. It's time for you, listen to me, to jump lanes. Because if we want to take our nation and the kingdom to the next level, we need to jump lanes. Because now we think this is cool. We've got this beautiful rainbow nation, but we all just stick in our lanes. So we stick with those that are like us. And God says, no, I want you to, to jump lanes so that you start to spend time with people that are different to you, that you start having meals with people that are different to you, that you start to get to know people that are different to you, that you hear each other's stories. So can we mix up this? Come out, just mix it up, please. Jump lanes, jump lanes. Do you think, do you think I've got a point? I, I think we, God has a basis, God has a basis of, of how he wants us to live as a nation. And we think we've got it right, but we've actually just started. There's a whole lot more integration that you now see. This is more beautiful to me than the first rainbow. Let's give them all a round of applause. Thank you, Lord. So God's shaking things up. Remember that phrase. It's time to jump lane, to get out of your lane. Because we get so comfortable in our lane. We get so comfortable with all of those. See, you were happy there were other... Other brothers to join you, Rich. You weren't the only one. But if you shorten your category, please get your mates here. Invite guys here. That's how it works. But I, I'm just encouraging us to say, guys, get to know people that are different to you because that's how the kingdom really is meant to be. These Gentiles and Jews started to, to connect with each other, eat together. Oh, that's powerful. Okay, so you'll never look at the rainbow nation the same ever again. Huh? I hope not. But Cornelius, back to him, he's a man of faith. Because he's expectant that Peter's going to pitch. I mean, what's the chance? You have a vision. You send some guys to a stranger. Who says he's going to respond? Well, most of the time he'll say, get lost. Who do you think you are that I must walk 45 kilometers to you to come and speak to you? And he's expectant. He's waiting for Peter because he knows. God's spoken to me through this angel. He's actually going to pitch. And we know that because when he pitches, it says his house is full of the, his soldiers and his family that are waiting for Peter to come and preach to them. I love this thing. There's this, there's this picture of mutual honor. Listen to that again. And I remember with the transition, Brendan and I said, if we just mutually honor each other, this thing's going to work. And the same with the rest of the guys involved in the broader tribe and so forth. But these two men show us a beautiful way to mutually honor each other. Why do I say that? Because Peter honors Cornelius by coming on a sort of a blind invitation. Like, who's this guy? He says, okay, I'll come. And then Cornelius actually expects him to come, opens up his house, but it says, and I didn't mention it in the scripture, but Cornelius falls at Peter's feet when he gets there. He starts worshipping him. Peter says, get up, I'm just a man. Don't you worship me, I'm just a man like you. Again, bringing, leveling the playing fields almost between, between the guys. John Stott puts it like this, he says, Peter refused to allow Cornelius to treat him like a god. But in the same breath, Peter refused to treat Cornelius like a dog. That's how the world saw the Gentiles at that time. That's how the Jews looked at the Gentiles. What brings this beautiful mutual honor and balance between these two men. And everybody's watching. And they start to see the example of how they can do. 
Scott also says further on, he says, this account is not so much the conversion of Cornelius, the first Gentile, as it is the conversion of Peter himself. Think about it. What is, it, what is within us? What prejudice, what, what thinking within us needs to change today? Like it changed in Peter. So that God can swing wide open the doors of unity. And you know, we, more than most churches, maybe live in this. But I think there's more. There's a whole lot more that God has in store for us. So the proverbial penny drops for Peter. He says, no man is uncommon to God. God recognizes and sees all men the same. So it prepares Peter's heart. Some people say this was Peter's, like a, preacher, a preacher's dream. Because Peter's been prepared by the Holy Spirit. God's spoken to him when he was in Joppa. He's got 40, like a whole day to like walk and think, okay, what am I saying to these folks? And then the people are prepared because they've been told by Cornelius, I had this vision, an angel visited me. I'm fear, the fear of God came into this home. So you've got this group of people that are 100% ready, hungry, prepared for the word of God to be released to them. And you've got a preacher who's anointed and filled with the Holy Spirit. That's a recipe for something to happen. Don't you think? So shouldn't that happen every Sunday morning when we get together? How ready, how expectant, how much full of faith do you come to church on a typical Sunday? Just ask you. Because there's something, you're robbing yourself, I want to say, of a huge blessing. Because our greatest blessing is when we come into God's presence expecting Him to do much and ready and full of faith. Don't you think so? You can testify to that. You come neutral. You come half asleep. You come bubble us from the night before. Chances are you're not going to get a whole lot. Sometimes God will work in that. But most of the time, when you come and you've prepared your heart, God meets you at that place of faith. And I want to say to you, come ready and expectant every time, whether it's a prayer meeting, whether it's a community meeting, whether it's a Sunday meeting. Something happens. The blessing factor in your life just goes up. I'm telling you, because the penny drops. And you know the best way to do that? It starts with a pre-service prayer meeting. I can tell you, the core of those guys have come ready and prepared, because I can hear it in their hearts of what they pray and what they read. Then they come into this building, and I can see their heads nodding, because they're getting this. And it's not a heavy for anybody who hasn't. I'm just saying it's something we need to grow in. Your individual walk with God, your in the closet with God, is, is worked out in the corporate with God. Come prepared and ready for Him to speak to us. God shows no partiality. That's the, the penny that drops for, uh, for Peter. I'm almost done. William Barclay says the following. He says, just to give you an idea of the context of this, he says, a typical Jewish man, Get on his knees in the morning and pray a prayer something similar to this. Thank you, Lord, that I'm not a slave. Thank you, Lord, that I'm not a Jew. Thank you, Lord, that I'm not a woman. I'm, I'm serious. That's a, so, so there's a gender thing here as well, a gender agenda. God is saying, uh, everybody, I see everybody the same in my eyes. I don't see race. I don't see rich. I don't see poor. Gentiles despised the Jews in return. It was, a, it was just terrible. And then everything changed in this one account. Everything changed. People were brought together. Unity happened all because God spoke to this man. He spoke to this man from two different groups. And he said, come, let's bring this together. How beautiful is that? The Christ Christianity, when the gospel was released, is the only religion at that point that disregarded racial, cultural, and national limitations. Deuteronomy 10 verse 17 says, For the Lord your God is God of the gods, and Lord of the Lord, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality nor takes a bribe. God doesn't see economic status. He doesn't see, as I said, nationality. He sees our hearts. What is beautiful about this as well is Peter had one sermon. He's always good at it. He had one preach. <laughs> it was Jesus the man, the life of Jesus, lifting up Jesus. Jesus died, crucified, and resurrected. Same message for the two different groups. I think that's important as well. If I, I always say to myself, if, if I preach something here or where, whether I go out or whatever, if this message is not universal to everybody in the room, if everybody can't receive this message and say, this is true for me, then it's not the true gospel. But there's one gospel message that everybody needs to bow the knee to Jesus and find Jesus. And that's what Peter says in this message. And the people respond beautifully. It says, whoever believes, I love that, Jew or Gentile, slave or free, white or black, rich or poor, good or wicked, whoever believes, there's room for you in this kingdom, in this reign that you have. And then, as I said, Peter allowed the Holy Spirit to tap him on the shoulder. The Holy Spirit 
poured out for the 3,000. It's interesting. So Acts chapter 2, Pentecost, the Holy Spirit poured out for the first time on the Jews. This is Acts chapter 10. It happens to be eight years later. I'm not saying every chapter is a year in between, but in my research and reading, it says it was eight years later. But now, that same Holy Spirit that was poured out at, at Pentecost in Acts 2 was poured out in Acts 10 on the Gentiles. And it, it brings them to equal footing. That thing of the, the foot, the, the ground at the foot of the cross is equal. That's the beauty of it. So let us never look down on anybody, on any of the categories that I've spoken of, because God's called us to embrace everybody through this word. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it at that. Chapter 11, all that happens, Peter has to defend what he's just done. He has lots of resistance. And I'm telling you, maybe more years ago, more than now, maybe even now, when you start to spend time with people that are different to you, some of your friends start to distance themselves from you. I'm telling you, that happens. Don't let that stop you. That's what we call to do. Peter had that resistance. He had, he had objections and he had to explain it and whatever in chapter 11. But I don't need to go through that because the, the key, the hinge, the, the event was in Acts 10. Then in Acts 12, James is martyred. Herod harasses the church. Peter set free when the church are praying for him. The church explodes in growth. That's this beautiful book of Acts. So what do you take out of today? What does God want to stretch and grow in you? What does he want to change in your mindset, in your heart? What does he want to give you capacity for? How does he want us to embrace those that are different? Because nobody, this gospel, as the title says, is for everyone. Nobody is too bad. Nobody's too dark. Nobody's too light. Nobody's too clever. Nobody's too dull for this gospel. God has got this for all of us. Don't you stand with me? Lord, we love the way that you work. We can read a scripture from 2,000 years ago and it can feel so right and so relevant to us right now, right here today. I bless you for every single person who's heard this message today, online or present. But I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would be the one who would continue to massage the truth of what I've preached. Uh, if there's any difficulties in applying it to our life, won't you help us move those obstacles out of the way, Father, but that we could live truly as your kingdom men and women. That you made Peter, who said, I'm going I'm to break some human tradition so that I can honor my God. Because God has said, I'm Lord of all, I'm King of all, and I have no favoritism, and I don't take bribes. So God's not interested in uh, what we have to bring to Him. It's just our hearts that He's seeking. Lord, I pray for Your Holy Spirit to just rest on every single one of us in this room. That as we read Scripture, it would become so alive to us. Even like today, I pray Acts 10 would never be just a, a chapter that we can just gloss over again. That we would see the radicalness. We would not be here. We are of those Gentiles that have been down the line, that have had the freedom to find this gospel and to have our lives radically transformed and changed. So we bless you, Father, for your word to us this morning. Holy Spirit, will you hover? Will you, will you massage in for the next few minutes, hours, days, weeks, whatever it takes for us to start to say, I'm going to live differently because of that message that the Holy Spirit preached or anointed that Kevin preached that morning. So thank you, Lord. Thank you that you've placed us, not just in this country, or in the city, but in this particular spot of the city, that we would be agents for reconciliation. We would be agents of love. We would be agents of kindness. We would be agents of grace. So we bless you, Father, and we ask you to have your hand on our city, even this week, as politicians start uh, negotiations and processes of how the city will be led. Father, we've asked you for one thing, that righteous men and women would lead our city, no matter what party they're from, and we ask for that today still, Father. And we look forward to hearing testimony on how that happens. So we commit our week to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.